This exhibition, Lake Constable, concentrates on the last 12 years of his life, which covers a period when his art has a particularly distinctive change, and, and that's defined by two aspects. One is the subject matter, which, although still Suffolk scenes and views of Salisbury and Brighton, nevertheless there's a distinct move away from the more accurate, naturalistic landscape of his earlier years, which we all know and love. And then another aspect uh, that's particularly noticeable in this exhibition is um, a loosening of handling, a more expressive uh, brushwork. So we start in 1825. There is a small preamble which shows some of the much-loved cloud studies that Constable made in the early 1820s in Hampstead. But the true story, if you like, starts with the leaping horse. It's such an important part of Constable's method of working. We thought we'd um, include um, examples of the finished six-foot paintings, paintings that he exhibited at the Royal Academy, with their full-scale preparatory oil sketches. So we've shown this juxtaposition um, with the composition of the Leaping Horse, and we've done the same pairing with Hadley Castle, um, which follows four years later. And it is very instructive to compare the handling between both. They were working sketches. We shouldn't judge Constable purely by them, but nevertheless we can't help responding to them simply because they're so expressive. So these last 12 years were actually clouded either by illness in the family or very sadly by the death of Constable's wife Mariah at the end of 1828. So in fact nine years of the 12 uh, Constable um, was a widower. There are three galleries altogether in this exhibition and the second one is devoted exclusively to what we call works on paper. So and that includes pencil drawings, pen and ink drawings, etchings, a mezzotint tint indeed, but it also includes, which may come as a surprise to some visitors to the exhibition, watercolours by Constable. Constable only painted watercolours towards the beginning of his uh, life and towards the end of his life. And he painted uh, very free, uh, beautiful studies of rainbows and cloud formations and so on. But he also painted highly finished watercolours, which he exhibited at, at, at the Royal Academy, um, probably because they were less effort at a time when he wasn't well um, than painting an oil painting. And um, the exhibition includes two tremendously famous and beautiful examples from the Victoria and Albert Museum, Old Sarum and Stonehenge, both of which were uh, exhibited at the Royal Academy in the 1830s. In this last gallery, chronologically speaking, we're covering the years in the 1830s up to the end of Constable's life. So although there is a sense in this gallery probably that uh, the palette is getting a bit darker and the handling even more expressive, I don't think we should look at this period and think it was, so to speak, downhill all the way. In fact, the 1830s were very productive with Constable. We see a variety of subject matter, uh, more Suffolk subjects, quite a few cottages, but some painted in a very wild fashion. And um, it ends just as the exhibition opened with the painting of the leaping horse. So, if you like, the other bookend of the exhibition is the painting which belongs to the National Gallery, kindly lent to us for this show, uh, the Cenotaph.
Constable currently still suffers from the reputation of being a so-called chocolate box jigsaw uh, painter. And, and in, in a sense, this is not his fault. It, it's because he's so popular, so familiar. Um, but our perception of his work and what made him tick as an artist, I think, is compromised by that reputation. And I personally hope that this exhibition, which shows him um, not only in more experimental mode in terms of subject matter, but especially his use of paint. I hope that it will help the public come to him with fresh eyes.